seat there. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Trout Club virtual event. Uh, my name is Kendrick, and I'm the president of the Trout Club, and I really appreciate you all joining us. Um, we know it's tough not to be in person, but, uh, you know, despite Ara's best efforts with the beard, we hope uh, we still look good here on the screen, and uh, you guys have a good evening. Um, the thing that makes a trial club special to a lot of us uh, that are members um, is that the club has a great relationship with the museum. We have a great relationship with each other. Uh, and we also like to connect on conservation issues. Um, so I think that lends itself to our partnership with the museum. And, and it's a reason that a lot of us uh, have got involved in this club and a lot of the funds that we raise through events like F3T uh, go to conservation projects in this area. Um, if you're familiar with old uh, Borax Landing on the Chagrin River, that's a project that we donated to to, to help happen uh, as well. So enjoy uh, some new fishing access there. <clears throat> uh, the club runs primarily on memberships. Uh, so to be a member of the club, you have to first be a member of the Museum of Natural History. So you have all the advantages that come with being a museum member. Uh, so that's kind of a nice bonus um, on top of, of joining the club. Um, if you have any questions about membership, please reach out to me. I'll put my uh, email here in the chat. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Bob Barnes, who's going to introduce our speaker uh, this evening and get you guys going. So thanks again for being here. And hopefully I can see you all in person at some point here soon. Thanks, Kendrick. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. <clears throat> um, so thanks, everyone, for joining. This is our first attempt at uh, uh, something like this. So bear with any technical difficulties that may, may arise. Um, <clears throat> we are gonna set it up so that the spotlight is on the camera that, that the tying will be done on, um, which should change everyone's computer to the, uh, the speaker view. Um, if by some chance you still end up with a bunch of squares on your screen with everybody's faces, if you switch to speaker view, it should still come back up to uh, focus in on Ara and his vice. So I'm setting that up now. Uh, Ara has been uh, a member and instructor with the club for uh, many years. Uh, he, he ran the tying program for the club um, and is my entry into um, fly tying personally. So he's kind of taken me under his wing and, and been my mentor. Um, with that, I'd love to kind of pass it over to him and let him talk about uh, 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 you know, what, he, what he plans to show us today and, and, and give us some knowledge. Uh, also, I will probably be adjusting the, the camera a little bit as we go along, uh, just to make sure it stays in focus. So bear with us on that. All right, with that, it's all you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, like, as Bob was saying, I've been teaching the class starting in uh, 1991 and kind of uh, fell off right around uh, 2015. And in, and in um, teaching a class, we start with basics and I thought this is a nice fly where we could take it from its basic form and and show you some variations that I've come up with and you can apply that to flies that you have. This is a, a prince nymph. This is Jerry Darks is one of his favorite. I remember one time he said my favorite steelhead nymph is a prince nymph. Now he doesn't make that his top uh, fly anymore but he still has it probably his top three top four. So uh, I tie mine slightly different, but basically you have these uh, goose biots on the back. Typically they're a darker color, like a dark brown. You have this um, uh, peacock curl body. You have a, a gold rib. You have biops, biots uh, for the wing. And then for a beard, uh, some sort of uh, uh, duck or, or grouse. I like using... Um, uh, uh, a wood duck, a bronze wood duck. It's a little stiffer, and I think it just reacts in the water like legs a little bit more, as opposed to something a little more webby. So I'm gonna take this fly off, and we're gonna tie it, and then we're gonna to get to another variation, and then maybe a third variation, okay? So the hook I'm using is a size eight, size eight, four X long with a, uh, kind of a curved bend, kind of a limerick, actually like a Dublin bend. And I like a ring eye. And a ring eye is a straight eye as opposed to a down eye or an up eye. So when you tie on, I take some 
take some thread on my finger and go about a hook, about a, uh, uh, an eye length behind the eye on the shank of the hook. And I just put a, a loose course all the way down and I'll actually just, and I'll leave. Hold tight there, team. Sorry about that, everybody. Some technical difficulty on our end. Give me one second with the camera here. Perfect, you're good. So as I was saying, when I get back to the, where I'm gonna tie in my first material, I tighten up my threads so that it acts like a primer coat so that when I uh, tie the material on, it'll grip onto the, um, onto the thread. Otherwise it'll roll on the, on the bare shank, the bare hook. So I tie to the far side, which in this case is towards you and your typical uh, tail is, is a gap length, maybe gap and a quarter. Your gap is your distance between your point and your shank. And where I tie in is where the, where the bend starts to, starts to engage the shank. But then this one, I have this kind of longer shank. I just like the way it looks, a little more attractive. So uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit farther than I normally would to tie in a hook, tie in a, uh, tail. And there's something called a soft loop. It's hard to show you, but I'm measuring it up and I do the, I do my far side, which is on your near side. And I kind of soft loop it. And I got pretty lucky. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is look at the, at the top of it, make sure it's, it's totally on the side, not uh, rolled over on one side or the other. And I'll look at the back side too. And then I'll make some security wraps. And I'm not too keen on cutting it either. I like putting materials down. It kind of builds the body up a little bit. It's not, it's not the, it's not uh, night and day, but just a little, little insurance, you know, just adding some material there because I want the body to be a little bigger. That doesn't mean that you just make a big body and put all kinds of stuff there. It's just a, a subtle difference. And then I do the near side. And if you notice, I'm just kind of massaging it, getting into place. And it's got one wrap on it. And there's two. Again, I'm looking. I'm gonna pull a little bit to even it out and I'm good to go. Hey, Arm, while you're, while you're putting this on, just a question came in through the chat. Yeah. Um, someone has asked, uh, does the prince nymph imitate a particular creature or is this more of an attractor pattern? I think it imitates a stone fly, but I think it's, I guess uh, the size and shape of a general <clears throat> nymph, but it could also be an attractor as well. Um, I use it for steelhead. I don't use them for trout too much. But then again, I don't use a lot of things for trout too much. Okay, so I'm just gonna tighten these down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my, um, my rib on. Now the rib is gonna go on underneath far side. So I'm gonna turn my hook upside down by using my rotary vise. It's important to have a rotary vise. And the vice I use is a HMH. So I'm on the down far side. And 
And then I grab this peacock curl. And I just grab a bunch of it. And what's a bunch look like? I never count them. I just kind of look for the bulk of it. And then I'll count them for you. So, Laura, when you, when you say you look for the bulk of it, right, you know, I'm sure some of this is, yes. uh, you know, years of experience and whatnot, but, you know, what, what, is a, what is the bright bulk for a fly this size? I know when I see it. <laughs> That's the best I can. Very helpful, very helpful. <laughs> but here, I'm going to count them, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we, we can't expect, so there's nine. And I could see 11 or 12. I could, you know, I could see maybe seven. Um, Sorry, just on this subject, right, before we move on, right? I, I presume that it would be dependent on the size of the hook, right? Uh, yeah. we're talking about a proportion. That's what I was going to get at. Okay. So I'll, on this one, I have nine. And, and uh, on a bigger fly, I'm going to use some more. So I'm going to cut the... The, the butt ends off in just a little bit because I'm going to bury the rest. And again, I'm going to tie this in. If you notice, it's really important. People, like when I teach classes or, you know, teach people, I always say, make sure you got that bare shank, one eye length on that shank behind the eye of the hook. Very important because you're going to eventually crowd your eye when you make your, when you start to make your, uh, your head and all your materials are going to come forward because you're not managing your materials, just as a discipline, always keep one eye length behind the shank. Okay, I'm gonna tie this on the top of the shank. Right where the, where we tie in the tail and the rib, bring the thread forward. Okay. So here's the first trick. Here's something that some people might not know that's helpful. This stuff's real brittle. You know, this uh, peacock curl, I mean, it breaks real like that. Just breaks so easy, okay? Obviously, gold tinsel doesn't break easy. So we're gonna tie this in a reverse direction. So typically as a fly tire, you tie, you know, up and away, all right? Well, in this case, I'm gonna tie up and to me. So I'm gonna wrap this forward exactly like you would wrap chenille. And you have to kind of be careful when you're when you're tying it off because you're going kind of you're when you're when you're making your wraps you're kind of trying to it tries to loosen up the the uh the peacock curl because you're going the opposite direction. You're not actually tying with the material, you're tying against the material. So you kind of got to take a little extra time to um, <clears throat> tie that in. Also, another little trick. I used to grab my scissors like this, middle finger and thumb. And then I was teaching this uh, <clears throat> eye doctor and they call these iris scissors, right? Because they're small. He goes, no, you use your ring finger and your thumb. And then you use your index finger as a uh, to hold the pivot, and it makes everything more stable. I used to go like this, you know, kind of go like that or whatever. And now I go like this. And it takes a little while to use it. Once you get it, it acts as its own kind of like uh, kind of a kickstand or something. So. So does that look nice? Just like chenille. It has a little iridescence to it. You know, people are putting crystal flash in their flies and stuff like that. This is kind of a natural version of that. Okay. So on your, now we're gonna tie, we're gonna, we're gonna put our rib on. And on the rib, typically you go five wraps. You could do more, you could do less, whatever, but typically five. And the tradition is that hackles were only good for about five wraps. So like back in, uh, uh, 150, 200 years ago, up until, I don't know, I would guess the 50s, they're good for about five wraps. So the, everything was based on five wraps. And I'm going ops, I'm going normal direction, and this will lock in. There's one, 
two, three, four, and uh, all right, don't tell anyone, we got four in, four and a half. Four. So be it. But you know what? Tell you what, let's do this right. So Ara, if you can if you can speak to it while you're wrapping, right? Yeah. Um, one thing I notice as you're doing this, you've got really nice, even spirals around it. Really, really tight, evenly spaced wraps. What the the, with, the tinsel? With the tinsel, yeah. yeah. Um, do you do you have any tips or any thoughts that kind of go through your head while you're doing that to kind of help you get? that really, really nice kind of, I don't want to say perfect, but like really uniform spiral. I like perfect because that's what I'm going okay, for. Okay. Um, yeah, <clears throat> here's how you do it. Tie a ton of flies. <laughs> that's the only way you can do it. Because I don't measure anymore. I used to measure, and sometimes they don't, yeah, they came out pretty nice. Yeah. So sometimes you get lucky. Again, my little scissor trick. And if you notice, you're not seeing that bare shaft, bare shank anymore because we're starting to get closer with our materials as we're wrapping forward. Okay. Now, I don't even know what they use for uh, what what the original pattern is. I can't see. Here we go. Part of me, people. There it is. Um. I don't know what the original uh, throat material is, but um, typically a throat is wrapped and then pulled down. A beard is just where you get a, a clump of stuff and you just tie it at the bottom. We're gonna do a beard, okay? And this is a uh, uh, bronze wood duck, you know, wood duck flank feathers. Then the first thing I do is I grab the, the fluff and I just take that off. Now if I was tying, a ton of flies real quick, which I don't do anymore. I wouldn't bother, but it's nice to see the material, the live material, okay? And then the next thing I do is, I don't wanna catch that stem, so I'm gonna take that stem and I'll pluck it. And if you notice, I don't use, hook, I don't use a, um, uh, scissors when I do a lot of this um, feather prep. And it's just a matter of, of of being able to understand the material. So now I'm kind of stroking it forward, get all those tips all evened up. And then here's the key. So I'm, I'm pinching that hard. And then, well, they just fell off. And those are all the stragglers. So these are the ones that will make it and they will become my, my throat or my beard. So I'm gonna rotate that hook again. Gap, gap and a quarter, gap and a half. It all depends on how you want the fly to look. Uh, again, you get a little bit of, of uh, proportional dexterity by tying a bunch of flies. In the meantime, you just kind of try to do what I do. Again, I'm going to ask you some questions as you kind of clean this up here. Yeah. So uh, first thing, and this is more an observation for the people who are on the um, on the call, right? You know, I want to point out, and it's probably going to come up with the next piece of material, uh, just how much Ara is manipulating his vice as he goes, right? Lots of twisting, yeah. turning, changing the angle. Um, That's really know, important. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just have a natural, I mean... Uh, Last time I tied a fly, I guess I tied a, a handful of these just to get just to get my uh, my chops. But I haven't tied a fly in, a, in I haven't tied flies like I used to in a long time. But the muscle memory is there, and one of the things I would tell students is do not let the materials or your tools control you. You got to control them. How do you know what that means when you're still learning? It's like trying to uh, ride a bike for the first time. You're not going to really know its nuances until you've you've got some pedal time in, and in, 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 in years for that matter. So, but I do I will work this vice a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to put the the wing case or the antenna. I don't even know what they are. I, mean, I guess they're antenna. 
And, uh, you know, I don't know where that fly was. Well, here's another one. You know, one goes this way, one goes that way, right? So always the far side. And how far back? I kind of like to get most of the body covered, most of it. I don't like the way that's laying down. So another thing I'll do, I tied this material in, it's got a kink in it, I'm done with it. I'm not gonna try to make it work. There we go. So that's the far side. Now I'll do the near side. I got genes of prescriptions on these on these glasses. I can't see. And I look down the throat of it. Looks good. Everything's kind of lined up. And then here's another example of me just kind of knowing the material. Um, I'll show you in a second here. Let's put some security wraps on here. Rather than rather than uh, cutting them, I just take this and pull one and. Pull the other and done. Okay, so now let's make a whip finish. I don't use tools to make whip finish. Do it with my hands, and I think all of you could do this. Some people prefer not to, but I think you get a better idea of it, a better feel of your of the of the um, what do you call it the uh, the head when you do it. So the key to a whip finish is wrapping one wrap tight in front of the other. And the rest of it is too difficult to explain over the phone. Yeah, so Ara, we, we may want to think about doing a uh, um, like a YouTube video on knots and doing this uh, for that. So look for that in the future, um, how to tie a work finish by hand. So that's that. Okay, so I'll tell you what I don't like about this fly. These um, biots are too tall. They're too high up. I want them to be... I want to lower like that, okay? And they're and they're perking up a little bit. I'll fish it, but I'm not I'm not happy with that fly. And I know that I had a little ridge on my head, and in the in the um, for the effort of time, um, I just thought I'll tell you what that looks like if it if it happens. And sure enough, it did. But everything else looks good. the the uh, The beard looks nice. Um, yeah, so there's that. So before we move on to the next fly, sorry, I know we're, we're um, spending a lot of time on the original pattern here, but I think it's good, right? So uh, talking about the beard, as you were tying it in, you, you mentioned um, you know, there's, there's a beard, and then I forget what the other name was. Throat. Throat. So yeah. uh, why would you choose a beard over a throat in a, in a pattern? Uh, throat requires more, is, is associated with bigger flies. And we're gonna see something of that when you do a when you do a throw. Uh, so let me just get a, let me just get the next hook and we'll Perfect. and I'll and I'll and I'll just demo a throw. So. Okay, so this is um, Gadwell. I love Gadwell. It's better than Maller. Jerry told me if you're gonna use Gadwell, tell him why. So I'm telling you why. <laughs> because um, you like it. That's why. Gadwell, the um, you know, it's uh, uh, Gadwell is like you know, basically like you know, dark and light, dark and light, or Maller is dark and light. But the Maller seems to be a little more blurry, a little more, a little more modeled, where this stuff has a little stronger lines of demarcation kind of like some dalmatians have not real attractive blotching you know with the black and white and others are real clean this this gadwell is real clean and i'm running a little low people for you duck hunters out there <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so, so we're talking about throat. So I'm gonna wrap this forward. It looks like a mess, don't worry, it'll clean up in a minute, I hope. <laughs> Okay, so here's the throat coming. So I, I just put a collar on, right? Throat is this. There, that's the throat. I mean, it's too big and everything, but see how it all goes down? Kind of like my, my beard, you know, smaller version. So this is longer, of course, but it's drawn down, but you wrap it where this year you just tie it in. Uh, the advantage of one over the other, the words don't come to me right now, but throats are usually so associated with um, uh, more involved flies, bigger flies, uh, wet flies, uh, streamers, salmon flies. Okay, so now we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna do something like this. Yeah, we do something like this. And uh, it has spay hackle on it. Check it out, right? So for you people out there that like to swing flies, um, here's an example. So once again, go all the way back. Do the things that we do. Grab our biots and I'm gonna to try to rifle through this as quick as I can. Far side first. Gap, gap and a quarter. Near side next. Get our rip going. All right, as you so said, we, I'm just gonna comment a little bit on some of the stuff I see you doing here, right? Well, what, I'll say, well, on this one here, so I'm gonna grab a bigger bunch. And I'm gonna guess that has a number of, that looks like 13 to me. I don't think I can count it. Go ahead. So I was gonna say one, one of the observations that I see there is um, you tie with your uh, with your your bobbin really close to the shank of the shaft. Uh, I think a lot of people, myself included, sometimes get that thing. Yeah. You know, four or five inches away. Um, You're talking about line control. Yeah. Okay. I think that counted 13, by the way. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. <clears throat> so Bob was talking about uh, uh, how you use a bobbin, basically. If your bob is way out here, you have no angle. You gotta go way over here to get this angle, way over there to get that angle, okay? Watch this, same angle. So now I have more control. I always keep it tight. I think that's probably something that, that every fly, fly tire can yeah. probably focus on and think about and work on is just trying to keep that, that bobbin real close to the shank of your hook while you're tying. 
the reverse wrap. You know, a 13 might have been too much. I don't know if you guys notice it just rolled on me because I wasn't paying attention. But I'll be okay. So right away, my first thought is that I'm crowding my head. So I'm gonna be in trouble. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be in trouble on this fly. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so spay fly hackle. Uh, ring neck pheasant, right? And then uh, right where the tail is, you get a handful of these guys. Where they're not, not just where they're still, you got some decent hackle without too much marabou. And then it'll also be, you know, this is the other part of it. And there's not a ton of them. And I probably this, I'm guessing there may be like around 12 of these feathers. And I pluck this one. Okay. So let's prep it, get the marabou off, and just get the working parts that we that we want. And there it is. And of this, we're only going to use. Let me just prep this a little bit. This section here. I don't know if you can see. It. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. From here to here. That's a that's an inch and an eighth, okay? Just a heavy inch. It's about it. But I'm wrapping around this. I don't need that much. And I just want to create that, you know, that spay fly thing, right? Fine. And then the other thing you want to do when you're when you're when you're wrapping a hackle is I like to fold the hackle onto itself. It requires a little dexterity. I take my thumb and then my forefinger and kind of push it down. It's not going to fold like a piece of paper, but it's got a kink in it and and it, there'll be memory there. So when you start wrapping, it'll remember to fold onto itself. And then you can use a uh, one of these things, haggle pliers. I don't bother too much with them. Only when things are real tedious. So now I'm just kind of getting the material and I'm grooming it so that it folds under itself and and, and, and goes you know goes towards the back of the hook. And I'm gonna tell you about the uh, hackle in a second. Uh, on, on why we tie it in at the tip. You notice I'm stroking it back, one wrap right in front of the other. And I think I'm done. This, this hackle is way too long for this fly. But it'll look nice, I think. Did you get rid of that waste piece? So let's look at how much is left, right? So you, you had yeah. <coughs> so a heavy I, inch and you I left. got three eighths left. Yeah. Left. So in other words, a little goes a long way with a feather like this. Correct. 
And now we're going to grab that gadwell. And that's going to be called a collar. And a collar is a is when you don't draw the material down like we did for the throat. And uh, raw materials. Let's go over here. Oh, there's a nice one. Yeah, this looks nice. Again, I'm gonna prep the same way, pull the marabou off. And if you have a tying room, it's better to tie on a wood floor than it is carpet because carpet swallows up all your hooks that you drop because you will be dropping them. And uh, it's easy to clean the materials on the wood floor. Okay, so a wrap and a half or one and a half wraps, same thing, tying at the tip. I'm gonna fold or crimp the, uh, the left side of the feather. This goes right in front of, and again, I'm really concerned about crowding that hook. And I tied it on like the top or the side or something. I don't pay too much attention to it. That's one. And um, shy two. So Jerry left some comments in the chat here, um, you know, basically saying long hackle, you know, looks good, especially when flinging, is flinging, swinging. Uh, you get lots of action in the water. So that's that's sort of why you might think about doing a variation like this, right? Yes, and Jerry's covered for me too, so I appreciate that as well. So I'm just trying to massage these, make sure they're gonna they're gonna flow right in the water. Yeah, it looks good. It looks terrible on them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. It looks good in person. It's not the most fun. So again, the biots, I'm going to tie um, them a little longer because of the the hook, you know, the body, the, the, the fly is a little bigger, of course. I have a question. This is Ken. So you're tying those biots in not as legs, but more as wings, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, I kind of got away with it. I'm able to put a nice little tidy head on it. Does it look like something? Let me see if we can get in real close. Oh, come on, give me, give me something here. Can you uh, touch the head with your uh, with your hand? Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we don't have a good focus here. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, trust me, it looks. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna do one more. And I'll go with a bigger hook. And um, and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna audible. I was gonna go with one hook, but I'm gonna go with something else. Yeah.
Well, I have a ton of hooks of all sizes and the numbers are not, they don't jive with today's numbers. And um, I, I just go by look anymore as opposed to requiring to, uh, you, know, have, you know, do a, a model number of so many X long or whatever. But this is a, uh, uh, a must add, it's a, a limerick bend. Limerick bend has this hard edge, a hard like uh, return at the bottom. And it's associated with streamer hooks. Okay, so now we're gonna tie a hook, a fly that looks kind of like that. And there's a difference in this one. On these, on these, all the uh, all the hackles are up front, but on this one, we're gonna start ours midway up because this thing, this this fly so long, and we want to have that 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 spay hackle kind of envelope the fly. Without it, without the uh, the keel of the fly, which is the the bend um, going down like this, and the materials riding up high, we want it to kind of flow with the with the hook as much as possible. And on this one. On this kind of hook, because you have a, a, a real good demarcation between the bend and the shank, we're going to tie the tie the tail, which is two biots, right at that point, which is typical with many flies, like your dry flies. You tie your tail in right where the bend meets the shank. And I got a couple of tricks up my sleeve on this fly. We'll see if it happens or not. I want it to happen. And then I'll use my nail and I'll push material around with my, with my fingernails. Um, I won't, uh, I won't let the materials ever tell me how it's going to happen. If they're being uncooperative for whatever reason, I just get another piece of material. I said that before, and, I'll, and I and I stick to that. Sometimes you have expensive materials, and that's a tough nut to swallow. But you got to do it then too. Looks good. Can I use this? Yeah, I can use this. Okay, again. Down on the far side. And the uh, peacock curl that I have looks like it's kind of short, but you really get a lot of wraps out of peacock curl. All right, so here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie the peacock curl first real quick. Again, I just get what I think I need. That looks good. That looks like around 12 or 13 once again. And I just cut a little bit of that white, you know, I don't know, the cuticle or whatever it is of the feather. And I'm gonna be generous on showing that exposed hook shank behind the eye. I don't wanna run into any problems on this one. Okay, now I'm gonna go halfway up the hook shank and I determine that's halfway up. And I get one of those really nice long ring neck pheasant We'll call them spay feathers. Now, if you tied this in at the butt, you know, at the, at the base of the stem, it's gonna flare out like a dry fly hackle, like a dry fly would. 
So in order to flow back, you always tie it in a tip. If you want to uh, uh, flare out uh, 90 degrees from the hook, then you're gonna tie them in at the, at the uh, base of the feather. Sometimes you'll see your feathers and they'll have some broken um, uh, barbules. That's what each little individual piece is on this. Uh, don't sweat it, it's fine. You still tie it with it. I used to cut them off because I thought they didn't look good, but now, but when you get the whole thing done, you never see them. We're gonna tie this in at the top, right about mid-level. Good enough. Okay. Now we have to, we're gonna wrap our body around, we have, we have to work around this hackle. It's a little bit of a pain, but not impossible. Again, the reverse wrap. Now, some people like to weight their flies. I don't like weighting my flies. I don't like weighting my flies because it's an extra step. And I don't like extra steps if I don't have to do it. And I have a, a belief in, you know, that and the, and the belief is, you know, is uh, been argued against and successfully as such. But I. Uh, if a fly is heavier than normally is and is a current, it's going to react differently than it would uh, if it was the natural weight of an actual uh, insect. So I get weight, I get my, my flies down with split shot. And there's a technique to that. So here we go. It's one. And then watch this two and caught it. See that? Real important. Two, three, four, and pretty close to five. So now this hackle is going to follow the, um, the rib. And watch that I rotate the vise, and just let the vise do the work as I watch, making sure that the that the uh, oh look at that. And there it is. So that's that pretty much sucks. So what you do there is stay composed and work really fast. <laughs> now it's Every, pretty, everything yeah. that could go wrong just went wrong. <laughs> Sorry. As you see, I don't get upset because uh, it happens all the time. No big deal. As the chat is telling us right now, it, it might be time to grab a beer or take a sip of whiskey or something just to recompose. Okay, and then I'll show you how I will restring my uh, my bobbin. I'm using eight odd thread. So I, I put it through. And there it is done. And get some more, uh, some more rib. 
this guy too. Huh? Is this guy good or you want me to grab you another one? Uh, I got some here, but that's okay. good too. Thank you. Every fly tire should have a fly caddy. <laughs> Someone that grabs and preps your materials for you, cues you up with a new bobbin in case yours is, <laughs> you know, it's. The fly tying version of a roadie. Yeah. <laughs> tune your, yeah. your guitar while you wait. Plays and young Casey has a stressful moment, <laughs> like if you're setting some married wings or something. That feels like 13 people. And I'm going to say it's now it's 13. Good Zoom. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, that one that you have, that looks nice. Yeah. This looks nice. So I'm looking at two feathers and I'm trying to see which one is talking to me more and I'm gonna go with this one. And I was looking for if it has just a little more fuller hackles, less broken hackles, Actually, the one I had before was a little nice one. These are not as nice. And when I say nice, not as long. Again, we're looking at about an inch and a half of material. I had a lot of jokes lined up for today too. I just lost them all. <laughs> it's kind of nervous. Okay, so again, reverse. We're not out of the woods until that hackle is laid down, just so that you know, this stuff here, this is gonna be, this is no big deal. This hackle, if it breaks again, that's not fun. I might have to like audible. So some people, uh, when tying things like this, and you know, what's your opinion, Ara, um, might actually tie two of their spay, fac spay hackles in on the off chance that um, they break one, just like you did. So they've got a second one that's already tied in. And if they don't need it, they can just cut it off or break it off. Kind of like the guy who walks the river with a fly rod and a casting rod? Yeah, why not? That guy? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Okay, I know if anyone was counting, that was six because I tied the uh, spay hack a little too far back in, in this rush. So that's the way it goes. But notice that nice, generous amount of, uh, of uh, hook shank that I have. Okay, let's be very kind. Be kind, wine. So far, so good. Starting to run out of hackle. Not happy about that. Hence the five wraps. And just made it. And you always have to critique your fly. You know, when you do something good, you think is good, you got to recognize it so that it builds muscle memory. When something's not so right, you got to recognize it. And sometimes you don't see it right away. Sometimes it takes six months or so, or, or you know, somewhere down the road where you realize that fly wasn't, you know, what, what you hoped it to be, what you thought it was. 
And right now I'm just kind of like stroking it back, make sure it looks happy. And yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so there's that. And, and now we have a, uh, a hackle that's uh, going all the way through. We're gonna put a collar on it. And we're at about an hour, I think. Yep, just about an hour. So I wanna do one more thing if I can pull it off. And I'm just, I'm just looking for the right feathers. Good enough. So I'm only ha I only have about maybe uh, three quarters of an inch of material here that I'm going to use. And then when you're tying, the goal for the most part when you're tying is use the thinnest thread you can without breaking it. And the stuff I have is older stuff. I bought some newer threads and I was really impressed with how, how, how much stronger they are. Now, are you talking about like the standard kind of wax nylon thread, or do you mean like the uh, exotic material threads that are out there now? I guess it'd be called the exotic ones. Got it. Uh, so about 80 denier or 120 denier, whatever denier. That's just the size. Yeah, that's just the. But there, I, I used them and I uh, was really impressed with them. So kind of giving myself away on where I kind of left off as far as materials go. Okay. So now we're going to, we got to put some sort of a wing on it and my thread just broke again, but we're fine. And we could always maybe set some uh, spay hackles or spay uh, wings on it, some D wings. So I got this, uh, this feather here, it's kind of a slate gray. And I'm going to count out about probably 10 barbules. And you won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm using my, uh, my, um, but my W needle, needle, and I'm pulling away, and I'm going to count 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we'll do, do, we'll do 11. Actually, 10. These things are a real pain to set. Actually, we're gonna set them like this. And this is kind of a what a what a feather wing wet fly setup is. You don't see these flies too much anymore. I'm sure they're available, I mean to buy, but kind of going away with a dodo, as they say. So I'm just matching them up. And that one just gave me some problems. So we'll do get another one. So I have a left and a right. 
I know you're having a hard time seeing it, but it's left and right from this feather. And I'm gonna match them all so the tips are perfect. And when it's done, it's gonna, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It makes it look easy, folks. I got real lucky on that one, guys. <laughs> yeah. There, that <laughs> looks like something. Look at how that, all that material eats up that, that hook shank. And then, how are we on time? Where are we at? Just over an hour. Maybe we should just stop while I while that looks good instead of me kind of hamming it up and put something else on there. Unless I should. You want me to or no? Yeah, take the victory lap. Throw throw something else on there. All right, fine. So horns look cool. Jungle cock is nice, but horns are just subtle. They look good. So this is a, uh, what is this? Scarlet macaw. If you need this stuff, it's a good time to date someone who has a scarlet macaw. <laughs> no, I did not date someone who had a scarlet macaw. <laughs> But just look, watch how this bittersweet just looks so pretty. I mean, look at that. Does that look gorgeous or what? Can you see that? Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's coming through. It's a little, let's see what a little bit more light does for us. And then one for the near side. And um, yeah. And let's put a head on it. And um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, I know what I want to say. So we took one fly and we kept on evolving it till we have a completely different fly, but it's kind of the same fly with just longer stuff on it and a couple things added and a little twist here, a little twist there. As you become more proficient as a fly tire, you'll be able to see it. You know, you'll be able to see the, um, can you see the, see how nice and tidy that is? Did this help? Yeah, that, that worked, yeah. Yeah, that we lost. <laughs> Here. Yeah, yeah. Twisted towards the camera a little bit more, yeah. You can see just how upright the wing is. Is that good? We yeah, see? I think so. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, Everything came up pretty uh, perpendicular to the hook. So um, we went with, started off with a, a fly like this, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, a fly like this to a fly like that. So if anyone has any questions, I can feel them. And if they don't, then uh, I'll leave it to you, Bob. 
Uh, well, I mean, it, it seems like we don't have a lot of questions here. Um, I think we'll try to do a couple of things as a follow up here. We'll take we'll take some uh, close up photos, particularly of this last fly, and make sure we post them up onto um, our, the the club's Instagram account so that everyone can see kind of the details um, that might have gotten missed here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's really about. That's really about it. Jerry, do you have anything to add or, or any, any closing thoughts or remarks? Uh, you know, no, nothing specific, Bob. Uh, you know, I think one thing I, I thought was very uh, interesting was the various techniques that, you know, were brought out as this evolution uh, occurs. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the fun things of fly tying is having the ability to just create you know, uh, and, and add on to maybe, uh, you know, existing patterns and stuff and just tweak them and adjust them to, to do different things, you know? So, uh, I mean, I, I'd fish the heck out of that fly right there. I mean, no doubt in my mind, and I know it'll catch, you know, you so. Can have it, Jerry, and, yeah. uh, you can show me what you catch with it. Yep. Uh, you know, Jerry's so no, Prince right here. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, no, I thought it was very cool, very interesting, and uh, I liked the progression of the way things went, you know, so, uh, yeah, very good. Was there, was there anything that I missed on talking about this fly, you think, Jerry, or no? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think specifically. I mean, I put a thing in the chat where the prince really is just an attractor nymph, uh, and a lot of people, it actually closer resembles an Isonychia mayfly nymph than anything else. And that's based on the white, you know, white streak on the back and uh, the peacock body, you know, so, but bottom line, we know it catches fish, or, you know, it catches trout everywhere, you know, so it, it's just a good fly. Uh, but no, I think you covered, covered a lot of stuff uh, very thoroughly, you know, uh, we just, you know, on our end, you know, and this has nothing to do with you, we just have to work on getting the focus better. And, th and that's it. So, uh, and I just say, you know, on behalf of the club, thank everybody for, you know, joining us tonight and, uh, hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Uh, you know, I learned a few things as far as, uh, you know, tying in spay hackle and wrapping and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I thought it was great. Thanks. Thanks everybody. And if you've got any requests for, patterns or topics of these sort of tying series that we do uh in the future just let us know and we can we can kind of cover you know the uh the more targeted focused areas that this group might be interested in so thanks everyone have a good evening thank you <laughs>